Hey, Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. One of my newest website clients who's a home service contractor, he sent over a couple big batches of job photos that we're using for the photo gallery. So he started to do this manually. He was just texting me or emailing me photos with the address included. But obviously, if, if we're dealing with 20, 30, 50 photos, that's a huge pain. And you may know that a digital photo includes EXIF data, which that shows you all the details behind the photo, including the GPS coordinates. So I wanted to figure out a way to automate this. Today, I'll show you my solution to extracting the GPS, a way to automatically convert that to a physical address. And then I'll show you a couple ways that you can use this with websites. If you want to look at these details that are embedded within the photo, you can right click any photo and go to the properties and jump over to the details tab. And this is where all that information is stored. You can see the origin, the date it's taken, the dimensions, the camera that was used to capture the photo. And then if we scroll down, this is where the GPS information is. So we have a latitude, a longitude. And like most things, I want to get this information into a spreadsheet. In doing searching, there was a tool that came up it's pretty popular. It's called Exif Tool. So let me jump over to this tab here. If you do a search for this Exif Tool, you'll see where you can download this. I'm on Windows, so I chose a Windows executable, but you can also do this on Mac. So I have this tool on a folder on my computer. Here it is, exiftool.exe. Then I got my Photos folder. That's where I'm going to put all the photos that we're going to process. And lastly, I have a little notes document here. And this is where I'm putting in the instructions. So this is a command line tool. You have to go into command prompt to use it. Let me open up this notes document. And you can see that this is the command we're going to use. This is what runs the program. And then these are all the options. So you can see it's pretty obvious we're getting the latitude and the longitude. I already forget what this dash N does. <laughs> so you have to look into the documentation or what I did is I found some of this from Stack Overflow and copied and pasted it and just adapted it to my own needs. You might even be able to use ChatGPT to get some of this information. But basically this is extracting all of the GPS information from the photos folder and it's putting it into this geotags.csv file. And that's what we're going to use to copy and paste over to our document, which we'll do even more processing there. In order to do that, we have to format the CSV. There's some just little search and replaces that I do. I'm using Notepad++. I have a tutorial if you want to check that out on Notepad++, which I'll link up here in the top right. So let's get started with this. You can go back to the folder, and I do recommend using Command Prompt. I noticed on Windows, you can right-click and do this open in Terminal, but Terminal is a separate program the command prompt and for some reason that command that I just showed you the exit tool command didn't work in terminal but within your Microsoft settings you can choose whether you want to open terminal or command prompt with this right click so I had to reset this so that when I do this it opens command prompt that'll put us right in the directory otherwise you can navigate to a directory by doing the cd command on command prompt change directory if I do cd dot dot I believe that should take us back one directory and if you do CD and then search out the folder name, so this is exit tool. If I just type in E and then do tab, that'll bring us back to the directory that we need to be in. And then I can copy and paste my command right here. So I'll go back into command prompt, paste that in, hit the enter button. And you can see that in our folder here, it generated this CSV file. I'm going to open this up in notepad plus plus. There's probably a way to format it using exit tool, but I just, didn't figure it out, and this is easy enough. So the first one we'll do is this search for the photos header. I'll just hit Control F and paste that in, and I'm gonna replace that with just nothing. So let me backspace what I have in the replace with field. Go back to this tab and I'll do replace all. And then we go back to our notes. The next search is for this GPS longitude. And I'm replacing that with a tab character. So let me copy this, go back to the geo tabs. And you want to make sure on Notepad++ that you have search mode on extended. That gives you the option to do a new line character, return, tab. I don't know what the zero is, but there's other formats you can use. So we're just going to use a tab to insert that. And this will make it so that when I copy and paste this into Google Sheets, it'll go into a new column. So let me do the replace all with that. And we can do the same thing with latitude. In fact, I probably have this in my searches. 
because it's one of the more recent ones that I've done. So I can pick the GPS latitude here and replace all. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is replace the return and new line. So that's just the new line basically and eliminate that and just keep the tabs. So it's gonna search for every new line plus a tab character, which that's gonna be this right here. Same thing right here. So let me jump into here and select that, replace it with a tab. And now we have our correct formatting that should make this easy to copy and paste. And I'm just gonna remove these two as well. So I can take this data, I'm gonna copy it, and I'll go to my sheet here. And I wanna include all the resources that you'll need to do this in the description below where you can download it. I'll put everything into the notes text document, including the link where you can download this Google Sheet template. So just to be safe, when I paste into Google Sheets, I usually always paste the values only, which that's control shift V. Now we have our file, the latitude, the longitude, and the other thing I have in here embedded is the Google map. So now that we have the latitude and the longitude, if you just wanna open up the Google map, let me show you the photo here. I'll pick one. So the first one here, this is from the Philadelphia Auto Show. This is back in 2014. So that's the first photo on here. So let me bring up the Google map and you can see where this is pinned at. If I hit the layers, you can see it's the Philadelphia, or I'm sorry, the Pennsylvania Convention Center. So let me go back to the spreadsheet here. And you're probably wondering, how do we get the physical address from that? And this is where Google Apps Script comes into play. It's a tool built into most of Google's products where you can automate between them and also build custom functions. So that's what we're gonna do. And to get there, you go to the Extensions tab and click on App Script, and that'll bring up a new tab with a blank sheet of code where you can write any function you want. And if you have a function like this, you can reference that from within the sheet, just like you would this function. So if we go over here, I'll copy the snippet of code that will give us the address. Pretty much four lines of code. And I found this on Stack Overflow, but then when I went to the Google App Script documentation, it looks like that was copied just right from the documentation. You'll see the documentation. It's on developers.google.com slash app script. And this is where you can look at the ways that you can use code, all the functions that are available for all these services. So you can use Calendar, Docs, Drive, Forms, Gmail, Sheets, Slides. And then down here you have Analytics, Maps, Google Translate, YouTube, and they even got more. Within the Google Maps section, we're gonna use the geocoder function. And there's a function on here called reverse geocode that lets you input the latitude and the longitude and it's gonna output a formatted address. So we can go back to our app script and you can see how this is done. The first line is a way to add a delay in here. It's putting this function to sleep for 1500 milliseconds, which is just 1.5 seconds. And I think partially that's because there is a limitation on how many times you can do this within a day. So this is the object that's built into Google Apps Script. We're creating a new geocoder object, and then we're running this method, reverse geocode, and inputting our latitude and longitude, which we will grab from our sheet. And the result of that is going to this response variable. With this done, it should work. So we can rename this. I'll just call it geocode. And this app script is always gonna be linked to the sheet. You can also go over here to the left menu. And if you wanna run something automatically, you can set triggers. Every time these functions run, you can check out the executions. Um, you can test it. So right now we're gonna save this project. And if you wanted to run a function or debug it, you can select the function from this dropdown menu. Ours is called reverse underscore geocode. And you can run it and then go to the execution log to see the status of this function. And you can use this logger object in order to send some information to the command line of the execution log to debug it. So that's just a really quick intro on Google Apps Script. If you'd like to see another tool that I built with Apps Script that's a little bit more advanced, I'll link up a time tracker that I made which links into Google Calendar. So it tracks your time from your Google Calendar events. But now that we have this done, let's go back to the sheet and now reference our function. So we'll do reverse underscore geocode, and then we can put in the latitude and the longitude as input variables. Let's see what this gives us. So it's loading right now. It's taking a little bit of time to calculate. And there we go, 106 North 11th Street, Philadelphia. Let me go back to the Google map and see if that's accurate. And you can see that the actual address of the convention center is 1101 Arch Street, which is right here. 
My GPS was somewhere around this area, which puts it on 11th Street. So it's pretty much just going to grab the closest physical address. For instance, my client was taking photos from the middle of the street, and sometimes it was the address of the house across the street. You just have to pay attention to that if you're looking for precise addresses. So let's do the rest of these. Let me drag this function down. And you can see how it's giving us a couple different variations of the formatted address on here. I don't really know what this format is called, but I do see it on Google Maps pretty often. So I think that they may have created it. This second picture here was Maryland in a sunflower field. So let's check that out on the GPS. And you can see how Google Maps formats that address with this custom ID as opposed to the number on the street. And then if we take a look at the other ones, this one's from Atlantic City. And you can see it gave us a crossroad, Pacific Ave at Brighton Ave, Tropicana. That's the name of the casino that it's at. This one here is South Broad Street, Philadelphia, which that is the Wells Fargo Center. But let's check that out on the Google Map. And you can see the Philadelphia Stadium Complex down here. This is also where the Eagles play and where the Phillies play. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is how to take this address and add this address into the metadata of the photo. And the reason I want to do this is because if we add it as the caption to the photo, when we upload it to WordPress, that caption will already be there and it'll appear within the photo gallery. So let me just show you an example for this first photo. And I have a couple other sheets here. I have add captions, which for this, I manually paste in raw files. So if I go back here, this is the file name. So let me copy and paste that to the add captions. And I'll expand these columns a little bit so you can see everything. These are the two fields that we need specifically, source file and caption abstract. And we need to include that photos subfolder within the exif tool folder. So that's why I append this photos slash to the front of it. I usually put these files into the client's folder once I'm done doing this. So let me just copy and paste the address into here. And then the captions tab, this is nothing more than the two columns on the right here. And the reason I do that is because I want to export the CSV. You can just manually copy this information. And I actually don't even need the first row here. So let me just do the second row of data. I'll put it into the captions tab. And then I'll do file download as a CSV. And we can open that CSV in Notepad++. So you can see on this one, it actually is comma separated. We have our first row and then our second row of data. And we're going to use this to update the metadata using exif tool. So let me go back to the notes here. The way to do this manually is by using this line. We're triggering the overwrite original option. Otherwise, I think it would back up the original photo and create a new version of the photo. And then you can use the caption and update that or the headline. And I was testing both of these manually to see which one integrated better with WordPress and it was the caption. So that's why I, I omitted the headline from this CSV over here. And the way we do this from the CSV is by using the CSV option, telling it to use this captions.csv. We're still using this overwrite original option. And I believe that this runs it on all the extensions that you'd like. In our case, we only have one extension and that's JPEG. But if you had various formats of photos, you could add the other extensions here. And then this is going to tell it to look in the photos folder. So I just need to add the captions.csv file to our exif tool folder. Let me go up a level. So let me copy and paste that. And we're just going to change this file name so it matches what we have in the command line prompt, and that's captions.csv. Let me once again show you here. I'm going to open up the info for this first photo, and right now we don't have any info in here. So let's go back to the exif tool on command prompt, and I will paste in this other command. Let me copy that. We'll go into here, paste it, and let's see what happens. And we got a couple errors here. I think this is just because I only included one photo on, on the CSV file. So it looks like it says one directory scanned, one image file updated, but the rest of these source files were not in the CSV database. So let's see if this worked. We'll go back into here into our info. And there we go. Our address is now added as the title. Let me take this photo now and upload it to WordPress. And I can drag and drop this photo. We just got it uploaded, and now that I click on it, both the title and the caption contain this address. So that's a real quick introduction to Exif Tool. 
you can see how useful it is if you're processing a lot of photos. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, if you wanna grab all the resources from this tutorial, check out the link in the description below. I'll include that notes text document where you'll find everything that you need, including the spreadsheet template, the link to EXIF tool, and all the commands and formatting that we went through. Now, if you just found this video, but you don't know anything about websites or web design, just the fact that you're using something like EXIF tool means you probably have enough technical expertise to give it a shot. So if you'd like to learn WordPress, that's the software that allows you to manage a website easily, which we just saw from the photo uploader screen. If you'd like a much more complete tutorial on how to use WordPress, check out my free training. I'll include that link in the description below, and you can also find it at websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. And if you are a little bit more experienced and you want to start freelancing with your skills, you can go to my homepage and download a cheat sheet 15 tools to start your web design business. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something today. If you'd like to get all future tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you can hit that bell to get notifications. And if you figured out a new way to use Exif tool, a different setting that I didn't go through today, I'd love for you to share it in the comments below. Thanks for making it to the end of this video and I'll link up a few other tutorials if you want to keep on learning.